everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a rather unique PC from a company called Jide. Uh, this is called the Remix Mini, and the reason why they call it Remix is that it's running with a very customized version of Android that allows it to operate as a desktop operating system, yet uh, retains all of the compatibility with Android apps. It is very interesting, and we're going to see how all that works in a minute. Now, this is the PC here. Uh, it is fanless, of course. It's running with a lower-powered uh, 1.2 gigahertz quad-core A53 processor from all winter, uh, two gigabytes of RAM on this version along with 16 gigabytes of storage. Uh, Bluetooth is built in as well as wireless N at 2.4 gigahertz. You have your HDMI port here, of course, for plugging it into a monitor, a headset microphone jack here, a SD card slot here for adding some additional storage, two USB 2.0 ports, and a 100 megabit ethernet jack, and of course, a uh, five volt power over there. So it doesn't consume all that much power. It isn't all that fast either, but uh, what they've done with Android, I think is fascinating. So let's boot this up and see how it works. So this is the Remix OS desktop. Now everything on here is Android. There is no uh, special stuff running here beyond the operating system itself. So these are stock Android apps that uh, we have on here. We've got a taskbar at the bottom. Uh, we have a start menu, just like we have on many other operating systems like Windows. Uh, you have a little notification bar here on the side so you can pull out uh, notifications that are coming into your Android apps. I've got the YouTube app here running right now. This is the Google Play version of uh, that application. And down in the taskbar, I have two apps that I have uh, minimized that I can repopulate uh, back to my desktop screen here. So I've got the Android version of Microsoft Word as well as the Android version of Excel. I can resize these windows. Uh, what's interesting is that the, uh, the Microsoft versions of, of spreadsheets and documents work better than their Google counterparts do with this operating system. So I have a little bit more flexibility on resizing windows here on the Microsoft version uh, than I do on the Google Sheets version, which tends to just uh, make everything too large for my liking. But uh, you can see here we've got Word running here with a template. I can scroll through the list here of things that I'm working on and even uh, add new text. If any text looks a little weird on the screen, it's because of my uh, video scaling hardware that I'm running right now. I had a hard time getting this to work with my video capturing system here, uh, but I am setting this at 1080p 60, although I did notice when it was plugged into my regular monitor that the fonts look kind of cloudy, almost like it was upscaling uh, from a lower resolution. So I, I don't know exactly what they're doing with font smoothing or something, but uh, the display is not as sharp at 1080p as it should be, and I definitely checked to make sure that it was, in fact, running at 1080p, which it is right now. So there is some, uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, image quality issues that I'm noticing, and I think it just might be due to how they're smoothing out fonts, especially uh, smaller text on white backgrounds. But uh, we can maximize our windows just like we do on other, uh, other devices. I can minimize them. I've got the full desktop here also, so I can grab, uh, for example, this calculator app and drag it to my desktop and be able to uh, run it from there if I want to do that. And again, that video is still uh, chugging away in the background there. I did notice though that some apps are not as friendly to being resized as others. So the Google YouTube app here, I can't resize it from this side of the screen, but I can over on this side. So there is you know, a little bit of flakiness you'll encounter along the way here, partly because these apps really aren't designed to do what you're seeing here. This is not something that you have on any other uh, Android device that I'm aware of at the moment. Another thing that I noticed on the YouTube app specifically is that uh, the maximum output resolution of videos on uh, the YouTube app is 720p. I could not get it uh, to go higher than that even when I went to a full screen playback. So uh, you will be limited to 720p video playback on the YouTube app. Now I did notice Netflix was a little bit flaky on here. Let me show you what happens with Netflix. By the way, you can use Alt-Tab when you want to uh, shift between uh, applications just like you can do on a regular operating system. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to Cosmos and just play a portion of that back and you'll see the thing looks okay right now. I can resize this window and do all the stuff I was doing on the YouTube app a second ago. Uh, but when I go to play it back here, what will happen is, is it uh, won't play in a window. It's actually going to expand beyond uh, the boundaries of space and time and its boundaries of my window that I've established here. So that is uh, one little glitchy thing that I noticed with Netflix. And this is the kind of stuff you're going to see as you're playing around with this because there are, uh, you know, again, these, these apps really are not designed for uh, this, you know, this, this kind of usage. But what you could do uh, is make the app go full screen and that would uh, pretty much alleviate the issue. So you will be able to watch it uh, full screen, but I really don't think this is quite ready to be uh, declared a good media PC just yet. We got a couple more things to look at though. We're gonna look at some gaming, some web browsing, and some Kodi too. So let's take a look and see how the gaming goes on this device. All right, so here we are running Bomb Squad here, and this is the Android version, of course, that I got off the 
uh, Android App Store. It seems to be running pretty well. The one thing I did notice though is that it doesn't really recognize my keyboard even after I tried to map the controls to it. So I'm kind of using the mouse as a uh, touch device. So it thinks I'm touching a screen when I'm actually just using my touchpad here. So uh, there are some issues that you will encounter, uh, but if you get like a Bluetooth controller or something, you should probably be able to uh, get around that issue. Uh, you will have this ugly bar here at the top. I can't seem to get rid of that on this particular game, uh, but you can though resize the window like we did on some of those other applications. So I can run it smaller here. I can even uh, drag the corner here and make it a little bit larger also, and it will resize in real time. So it still uh, kind of maintains that uh, resizable window thing going on here, which seems to be working pretty well. So uh, not a bad gaming platform. And again, I wouldn't you know make this the replacement for your Android uh, gaming device, but it certainly can run a lot of those games. On the 3D Mark benchmark, though, we got a pretty low score of 3,308. Uh, this puts it in league with many uh, low-end phones that are really not designed well for gaming. So while it's going to do a lot of these casual Android games very well, uh, some of the newer, more demanding games are not going to run as well on here because the processor on this will uh, limit it quite a bit. So web browsing is a little sluggish on here. That's due to the fact that we don't have the fastest processor available to us on this device. So it will render in relatively quickly on sites like the New York Times here. Uh, thankfully, they give you the article before all of their ads and everything else tend to render in. But this page is still loading right now. It will take a while for uh, all of those processor intensive components to uh, get themselves on screen here. So you can see things are slowly popping up on here. We've got the retargeting ad for our uh, Remix mini PC also here showing up too. But uh, once everything renders in, it does seem to work okay. Uh, you can resize the window with Chrome here, just like we did on some of the other uh, applications. In fact, uh, resizing on Chrome actually is uh, probably the best experience I've seen resizing windows on this OS, primarily because a lot of these websites are designed for uh, mobile responsiveness. And that is something that when you resize a website, those uh, sites are designed to do. So it's a very uh, nice experience resizing windows here in the Remix OS. On the Octane benchmark score though, we got a score of uh, 2,636, which is actually the lowest we've tested on our sub $100 computers. Uh, the Asus Chrome bit, which is just a few dollars more than this one, uh, scored a lot higher. Uh, so this does give you an idea as to where this thing's processor is. It's pretty much underpowered in my opinion. I think this operating system is adding a lot of overhead that is slowing a lot of things down. Uh, so I think if they can make one of these with a faster chip, uh, this will be a very interesting experience to say the least. But uh, right now it's going to feel uh, pretty slow, especially when you're doing the sorts of things you're accustomed to doing very quickly uh, on a faster computer. Let's take a look though at Kodi and see how we can play some of our high-end movies on this. All right, let's take a look at the Android version of Kodi running on the device here, and we'll uh, pull up a Blu-ray MKV I have on my disc array down in the basement. This is uh, one of my favorite films, The Empire Strikes Back, and I'll skip ahead a little bit so you can uh, get a feel for how fast it can queue up uh, different parts of the movie here. So we'll just uh, jump ahead a little bit. There we go. Uh, and you can see it does come back to life pretty quickly. It performs about where I've seen many other uh, low-end Android and Raspberry Pi devices for that matter perform in that it can play back the movie uh, with minimal lag and uh, seems to function pretty well. However, the image quality doesn't look all that great to me. I've seen better image quality uh, out of other devices, similar to that issue I had at the outset uh, with my 1080p monitor over there as well. So that is the Remix Mini. You can get this for about $70 right now. A very impressive device. I bought mine through their Kickstarter because I was very interested in this concept of uh, developing an Android version that runs in a desktop metaphor, and they've largely accomplished that. I mean, it really, even down to the right clicking here, you get a desktop operating system that runs all of your favorite Android apps. The problem though uh, is that the hardware is really slow and it's slower than it should be, uh, especially for uh, where the competition is at the moment in the sub $100 market. So we saw that Chrome bit uh, from Asus running Chrome OS. That was a very nicely performing device for a very low price, uh, as is the Kangaroo Mini PC, which is running with an Intel processor and Windows 10. Uh, just a little bit more, $99 for that one. And that one uh, really performs quite well. And those are the two computers that I'm recommending to people that are looking for something inexpensive expensive that they are going to use uh, day to day for specific tasks. This one uh, just isn't quite there yet just because first of all the performance is uh, what it is but also because the uh, apps just don't have a consistent feel to them as you're using them because they're really not designed for uh, this kind of desktop experience where you're going to be resizing them and moving things around. Uh, so there is some just lack of consistency right now that I think for you know average users is going to be a big problem uh, where those other two computers are certainly going to perform.
perform better. But if you are uh, heavily invested in the Android ecosystem and want a new way to interact with your apps, uh, they have accomplished something here, which I think is going to be uh, really interesting as they start developing more hardware that uh, has better performance backing it up. Because I could see this uh, running with a faster processor being something really, really interesting and really useful. So I'm hoping uh, that we'll see that. Even if it does cost a little bit more uh, than the $70 price tag for this one, I think it might be worth it because uh, this is something that would really do well uh, by having a better performing processor with it. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.